This is the new Nike Phantom Venom Academy Indoor featuring their new Phantom Stud technology. And you'll notice that it does say non-marking for the Phantom Studs. That's not entirely true. It does leave marks, but they're ghost marks, so you can't see them. What's going on guys, Josh from Soccer Reviews for you.com, bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Nike Phantom Venom Academy Indoors. This is the $80 option as an indoor or turf, they make it in both variations for the new Phantom Venom lineup. There is a pro model above it that retails for 120, review on those coming soon. And as of right now, it does not look like they're going to offer an elite version in an indoor variation. Either way, the $80 Phantom Venom Academy Indoor is likely to be the most popular one, mainly because it's the most affordable. But is it actually worth the $80 price tag? That's exactly the question that I'm going to answer in today's video as we go over all the details of what these indoors have on offer, including how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around, watch the entire video. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, we'll be able to pick these up below their normal $80 retail price. If you guys do end up enjoying this video and perhaps want to see more indoor and turf reviews, please support this video with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. So starting off with the upper, for those of you that saw my review on the FG version of the Phantom Venom Academy, which retails for the same $80 price tag, the upper on that boot is pretty much exactly what you get on this indoor model. It's a Nike skin upper, as you can see by the branding right here. And the Nike skin, as you can see, there's two different variations of it. You have more of a honeycomb based mesh, kind of similar to what we saw on the Hypervenom Phantom 1. And technically the Hypervenom Felon 3 takedown model that this more or less replaces. It's a little bit thinner than what we had on the Felon 3. Certainly not as nice as what we've seen on top end Hypervenom Phantom models in the past, but still very good considering the $80 price point. Any kind of mesh based synthetic is always going to be soft and flexible and as you wear these in it really does have a fairly premium feel considering the relatively low price and then you can see once you get to the area away from the forefoot and the striking zone you're going to find that it's still a mesh based technically nike skin material but it's a lot thinner and just more smooth overall mainly because you're not going to be making contact with the ball that much but the touch and feel is still nice in those areas you will also notice that this this does have what looks to be a strike element although the striking element is pretty much just black detailing with a little bit of texturing kind of debossed on the surface so it has the texture of a striking element but not really the feel or any extra grip whatsoever for the most part the touch on the surface is left relatively slick the laces are of course pushed to the lateral side of the upper where you'll notice that it does have this kind of bottom half lace cover some people love it some people hate it I personally don't have any issues with it whatsoever and you can see the lace cover itself is just made out of a slick slightly stretchy mesh material. You'll find that the lacing system runs pretty much the length of this entire lace cover area and then extends above it as well where you have two standard lacing positions but underneath that lace cover you'll find that it utilizes nylon straps almost like a fly wire cable system that run from the base of the sole to really secure your foot especially in the forefoot and midfoot area giving you a much more responsive feel than you might expect given how soft and flexible this upper will be once you break the boots in. My one gripe with this system is the way that they did the tongue. Technically this is a one piece enclosure even though it does seem to have separations here on either side of the tongue. The tongue itself is a padded mesh material which I'm perfectly fine with but the underside is lined in this smooth synthetic leather type material that has virtually no stretch to it. And you'll notice along the side here there isn't much of a cut on either side of what is basically an internal booty system that wraps your foot which means the opening to put these on and take them off is relatively small. So if you have really wide feet or perhaps a very high arch you might have a really hard time getting them on but in in general, it's just not the easiest boot to put on your feet. What I will say though, is once you do get them on your feet, they fit quite well. Moving to the rear, you'll find that these maintain a low cut design as you'll find across the entire Phantom Venom lineup. It does feature an internal plastic heel counter, so it's nice and solid at the back. And then internally, the heel liner is that same smooth synthetic leather that you'll find lining the underside of the tongue. And then it does feature a mesh line insole that is fully glued in, non-removable, which 
I think it should be removable for $80. We're used to seeing that from Nike at this price point, but they have not done that with this particular model. Moving on to the midsole and outsole, I have to say visually, I really like how they've designed this with the color kind of lining up with the black midsole on either side. I think that's a really cool feature. And the foam itself is left fully exposed. They don't really specify exactly what kind of foam it is, which is not too surprising considering this is the $80 price point option. But what I will say is the amount of underfoot cushioning you get, especially in the heel area, is actually really good at the $80 price point. Typically the foams they use don't feel like anything special. I don't mind the way that this feels whatsoever. And it's still relatively low profile as well. You don't feel like you're too high off the ground. Then you can see through the forefoot and toe box area. It does have the extended rubber lip from the outsole itself there for the sake of durability. Moving on to the outsole, it does feature the phantom studs like I mentioned, which is something I completely made up, but this is the indoor layout as you can see, which has a completely new layout to what we've seen before that actually is pretty decent in terms of overall traction. As with pretty much any indoor boot, if you're playing on an indoor court that has a lot of dust, you're gonna have to constantly wipe to maintain solid traction, but on a clean court, the traction is really good and for use on concrete and kind of a street soccer type environment, because the pattern itself isn't too thin, it actually does hold up quite well and it will be relatively durable on what is a much more abrasive surface versus something like an indoor court. So in terms of the indoor bottom, it's actually pretty solid. And there is also a turf version available if you're playing on turf. In terms of weight in a size 9.5 US, the indoor version of the boot weighs in at 8.4 ounces, which is obviously not as light as what you'll find from the FG boots, but considering that this is an indoor with a solid rubber outsole that's relatively durable as well, eight and a half ounces is actually really, really light, especially considering the $80 price point. So if you're looking for that lightweight feel from your indoors, these definitely provide that. Now, as you can see, I have not swapped out the laces and that's mainly because these are a little bit tricky to relace. Not that it's impossible, but it does take more effort than the average football boot. However, if you do want some replacement laces for these or anything else, sr4ulaces.com, there'll be a pop-up on screen. What I did want to show you though, is how these are a little bit more difficult than I think they should be to put on. And that has everything to do with this internal construction where the opening just isn't that big even once you've loosened the laces. So basically all you can really do is kind of get your foot in and that's maximum stretch for this front part. So you're left with this fairly small opening. You kind of got to use your fingers as a shoehorn. If you have an actual shoehorn that works too. And then you kind of just slide it through. It's not as terrible as some boots that I've worn, but just keep in mind that it's a little bit more difficult than the average football boot would be. On feet, the Phantom Venom Academy indoors feel really good. In comparison to the FG variation, there is a slight difference in the overall width as well as the volume, where these are slightly wider and slightly higher volume. And I think that mainly has to do with the indoor bottom versus the FG plastic sole plate, which makes a difference on pretty much any boot. It doesn't suffer in the fit department in any way at all. If anything, I feel like the indoor version actually fits me a little bit better than the FG model. But for the most part, if you want something that feels the same from indoor to FG, these are very, very close. As far as the overall quality of the fit is concerned, they fit extremely well. There's really not a lot of extra space on the inside of the boot, if any at all, depending on how well they fit you. And the Nike Skin Upper has good flexibility and feels quite premium considering the $80 price tag. As far as width is concerned, it does have a fairly snug fit. So if you do have really wide feet, probably not a great option for you, but otherwise I think these will fit most people. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US and the fit and the length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, considering that this is an $80 budget model, it's hard for me to pick apart anything on this boot. The one gripe that I have is the same gripe that I had with the FG version of the Phantom Venom Academy, and that is because of this internal one-piece construction, it does make it a little bit more difficult than I think it should be to put the boots on. But as long as you don't mind going through that couple extra seconds of effort to put the boots on your feet, I don't think it's something that's going to deter you from this particular product. Because once they're on, they are really, really solid. The Nike Skin Upper feels premium, the outsole and the midsole feels really solid, considering the $80 price point. And again, 
even when compared to other options at the academy tier from Nike, like the Phantom Vision Academy as an example, that's an indoor that I just straight up wouldn't recommend, not to mention it also looks really cheap. This suffers from none of those issues, and for $80, if you're interested in the design and styling of the Phantom Venom, I really think this is a solid option. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $80 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear you can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well other than that guys thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one